Hey guys, today I'm going to talk real MTG Finance with you guys, not fake news. Fake news. If you play FNM, if you have the opportunity to get price support and you can choose the different types of packs, buy guilds or get guilds of Ravnica packs. If you're buying a box, you're thinking, oh, maybe I should get Core Set, maybe I should get Dominaria, Our Devastation. I don't know why you would want that set, but save your money for this set. The value of any standard set is solely dependent on the lands. If you get fetch lands like Concha Tarkir, I mean, yeah, it will be a good set just because of those fetch lands. You remove those five fetch lands from Karns and Tarkir, and it's an epic disaster in terms of expected value. That is also true for Return to Ravnica. You remove the five shock lands, or gate crash, you're looking at a dismal, dismal expected value. So when we finally get a standard set that has five rares, all about ten dollars. I mean, I yeah, I see overgrown and temple gardens a little low, but they will go up and down as standard dictates. And that you don't need to worry about selling very fast. That you can keep these for a long time, even after rotation, and be okay with them. They're not going to plummet into oblivion like every other card, which we're going to see very soon due to rotation. One of the things I want to make very clear is that this is a once in every, looks like, three year opportunity to get shock lands and, and or fetch lands. And you should take advantage of that. If you're going to spend money on magic, I'm not saying you should spend money on standard to make money. I'm saying if you're a magic player and you're worried about your trade binder, you want long term value. Maybe you're not uh, an investor, but you want your binder to fluff up and look good so you can trade into things that you need later on. This is the set to go for. These are the five things that you should trade in. So it's not only, there's two factors, and a lot of people only consider one factor, expected value of a box. The second factor is how easy is it to trade into something that will be good. So imagine that we're in core set and there's nothing good in it. Well, it would be very difficult to trade our standard cards into something that is modern playable because nothing in Core Set is modern playable. But what if we're in Guilds of Ravnica and someone wants to trade or someone wants our Core Set cards and to trade for some land and we're like, all right, all right, we'll take your Sacred Foundry. That's a good trade. You're trading your standard crap for modern playables. And no other set could you really say that. That there are five cards that will be amply, this will be, there will be so many of these to trade. So number one, the value of the set goes up because these are five rares around $10. Number two, the ability for you to trade has just spiked like crazy. Because would look at, we will take a look at Dominaria and the Corset M 2019. And even though prices look okay now, they're not okay. They're not going to last. But these things, I know for a fact that they can't, they won't be, they won't have the same plummet that a lot of the standard cards have. And the ability for you to trade standard into standard has now become much more viable because the standard cards you'll be trading for are these five. Uh, I will go ahead and say you should... Unless you're getting like actual modern playable cards, if you have these five cards, you should not trade them for anything in standard. Just keep them in your binder or don't even put them in your binder. Just put them at home. But you should trade for these five cards. Your standard crap that has no value after rotation will trade well into this because there will be many, many copies of it. So the expected value, big deal when you have five rares. A boosted box, you're going to get two to four of these. And you can accumulate them. So once in, it looks like once in every three months, you will have, be given the opportunity to accumulate something that is absolutely guaranteed. Uh, most cards in standard, like there's no guarantee that these cards after rotation will see play. In fact, 99% of them will not. 
these five lands, as well as in EDH, but I'll just focus on modern, are modern playable. These five foil lands are going to be valuable. I don't need to know very much about this set, except that it has the lands. If a set doesn't have land, like uh, the Dominaria, they have the enemy buddy lands, I believe. It's just terrible. Like the whole expected value of the set just crumbles. And what are you trading for? Like, is there anything in Dominaria I really want? No, because what what would I want? Like, what would be one of the biggest issues is um, in MTG Finance, the people who have never actually tried to sell, they think it's really easy to buy a card and then sell a card, but there's time to receive the card. If you're going to order from different vendors, not every vendor is going to sell it or going to send it to you at the same time. And during the mail process, the price could tank in price because you're, hype, you're basing on the hype of a spec. So I've had specs that by the time they got to me from Puerto Rico, the price has already dropped and there was no way for me to get the quote ads I needed to sell. So I just kept the cards. The same can be said about, you know, it's hard to buy cards, but even more difficult to sell them. Who are you going to sell a hundred, uh, you know, a hundred Dominaria card rares into? I can't even think of any good ones. Oh, okay. Core, uh, 2018 crucible obviously is very good. And that's a guarantee, but there's very, but Crucible is also a mythic, and it's unlikely that someone, it's unlikely casual players have a bunch of Crucibles. It is much more likely casual players will have a bunch of these, and they won't really understand. They might know what it's valued at because everyone has their phones, but they may not understand that this is so much more valuable than any standard card they could be trading this out of. You should never trade these away for other standard cards. So again, if a person is willing to give you modern cards or standard, yep, do it. If a person is willing to give you legacy cards or standard, yeah, do it, of course. This is obvious. I'm not talking about the obvious. I'm talking about in a standard for standard trade. These should never be on your side of the table unless you're trading for foil versions of them. These should always be things that you want to trade for and things that you do not want to trade away. As soon as you get these, put them in, take them out of your binder when you get home from FNM and then just put them in a stash because you will thank me later. It's not that I believe these things will be incredibly valuable, but it's a guarantee. It is an absolute. So let's look at Corset. These are the rares in Corset. Aggressive Mammoth, I'm being told, is actually in the intro deck. So it's not even a rare you can get. A booster pack costs $3.99. Slash out aggressive mammoth. Is there a single rare in this entire set, non foil, which would pay for the price of the booster pack? No, there is not. There is not. Is there a $10 rare in this set somewhere? Nope. So all the value is at these mythics. These mythics are such a scam because they're not going, you're not going to get them. Like it's, Mythics in general, you guys know how I feel. I think it's one of the worst decisions Magic has ever made because you get graphs that look, you get, you get uh, screenshots that look like this. And I didn't even show you the cards under 40 cents. There's a bunch of them. You pay $4 and you get a 40 cent bulk rare that you can't even sell to anybody. Like it's a terrible, terrible feeling and I would not want that. I mean, this is why People don't buy this corset. They're not interested because what are you hoping to get? Which of these cards is attractive? Now, Dominaria, we have... So imagine that they, we banned the Goblin Chain Dude. We wouldn't have him, but I mean, we should have banned him, but we didn't. The Sofa Falls is the most expensive one, and it is indeed a land. And Woodland Cemetery, Isolate Chapel, uh, below that is the other one for $2.00. Uh, Hinterland Harbor, I believe. So because Core 2019 is a terrible set and no one should ever ask for a prize booster pack of that because it doesn't have land. It doesn't have a cycle of land. Or so therefore, 
here we have a cycle of land, but it's not very, it's not as good as the shock lands. And Sulfur Falls in Goblin is the only cards above the 399 MSRP, which means that those, I mean, if these two are the only two rares that you can hope to get your best case scenario, then you're screwed. And this is why Guilds of Ravnica is going to be one of the best sets, uh, recent sets, until we get a reprinting of the Fetchlands and return to Khan and Tarkir about three years from now. That would be very good too. Uh, my point being, do not buy Core Set, do, my, do not buy Dominaria. If you are a casual player, you want this set. If you are want to be a Shark or be MTG Finance, you want to trade into this. Same strategy. Go to your local game store, trade your standard crap into this other, quote, standard crap, which we all know it's not, and then take the, all your shock lands from your binder that night and put it in a, a box and keep the box. You're thanking me after rotation because everything is going to be obliterated in terms of price minus these five guarantees. Anyway, bye guys.